Frank Gore Jr. with a record-setting performance, and the Sun Belt starts out bowl season 2-0. It's Locked On Sun Belt. You are Locked On Sun Belt, your daily podcast on the Sun Belt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. I host Afternoons on Sports Radio 105.5 WNSP in Mobile, Alabama, covering the South Alabama Jaguars. And prior to that, hosting mornings on 103.7 The Game in Lafayette, Louisiana, covering the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Today's episode of Locked On Sunbelt is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Well, what a night it was for the uh, Sun Belt on, I guess, Friday uh, afternoon and on Saturday. It was going to start out and kind of go in order of the Bulls as Troy kind of has a Troy Trojans performance. Uh, and they uh, win 18 to 12. But we'll get to that second because Frank Gore had a sensational, if not one of the all-time great bowl performances uh, ever. Frank Gore Jr. for a Southern Miss had just over a 1,000 yards rushing, uh, was pressed into duty last season to play quarterback, uh, and actually led Southern Miss not to one victory, but to two victories as the quarterback because they had all kinds of injuries and COVID, and he was stuck playing quarterback, and he got a couple of wins. Uh, he mixed in some of that uh, this year. I had a touchdown pass against uh, South Alabama. I think he had a touchdown pass against uh, the Raging Cajuns. And he had a touchdown pass against Rice uh, in the Lending Tree Bowl Saturday night uh, in Mobile. Uh, overall, his night was spectacular. Southern Miss wins the ball game 38-24. Uh, we'll get in-depth in the uh, into the game here momentarily. Frank Gore Jr., just 21 carries. This is not like he had 35 or 40 carries. He had 21 carries for 329 yards, averaged over 15 yards a carry, and he had two touchdowns uh, on the ground. He was two for three in the air, uh, including one touchdown pass. He had 19 yards uh, in the air. Uh, the one thing I guess he did not do was a catch a pass. Uh, but Southern Miss finishes up the season uh, seven and six. And this game was kind of all Southern Miss until – the turnovers came. And when we previewed this matchup, it really was all about the turnovers. Both these schools uh, have minus turnover ratio. Southern Miss is not as bad as Rice is. Southern Miss was like minus three, but they still had like 20 turnovers. Or, or uh, they, they uh, I'm sorry, they had 23 turnovers, but they forced 20. So they had a minus three, whereas Rice had... Uh, they committed 30 turnovers, but only forced 15. So they had a minus 15 turnover ratio. Uh, and it was all, it really was all Southern Miss until uh, the second half. I mean, Southern Miss gets on top. I mean, boom, 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 boom. Uh, seven, nothing right uh, to begin with. Uh, they uh, trade punts a couple of times. Uh, Rice can't get anything going. And... Another touchdown. In fact, here we go. Trelo to uh, Jacarius uh, Caston, 20 yards. And the next play was a Frank Gore Jr. 64-yard touchdown run. So, in fact, uh, they it was a penalty on Southern Miss, an eligible man downfield, five yards, no play. Next play, Frank Gore, 64-yard touchdown run, 14-0. 14 uh, 14-0 Southern Miss. Rice gets a field goal. But then Southern Miss comes right back with a field goal. And then the turnover started to happen. The uh, Southern Miss stops Rice on three plays, and then they fumble. They stop Rice again, and then it's the end of the half. Rice comes out in the second half and starts lighting up the scoreboard as uh, the freshman, quarter, uh, freshman quarterback, was it A.J. Padgett? Uh, he just started going uh, crazy uh, for uh, Rice as he couldn't do anything. Rice's offense could not do anything in uh, the first half, uh, but then starts lighting it up. And so more turnovers. Rice gets a touchdown to begin the second half, makes it 17-10 Southern Miss. 
a fumble by Southern Miss. Rice with a touchdown, 17-17 tie game. Southern Miss punts, and then Rice with another touchdown, and it's 24-17. So this game went from 14-0 and 17-3 to 24-17. This is a lot like the games that Southern Miss has played all season long. A little bit role reversal when they played Coastal Carolina. And they were down 17-0, only to come back and take a 20-17 lead, but lose that one 26-23. Here, uh, they settled down, and Rice tied the ball game up. I'm pretty sure that was on uh, the Frank uh, Gore pass from, uh, yeah, from, uh, from Frank Gore Jr. to Taekwon Mims, and that tied the game up at 24. Rice, six plays, they're forced to punt. And then they just started running the football, you know, behind... Frank Gore Jr., but in this case, Trey Lowe finds Jason Brownlee uh, for a 26-yard uh, touchdown pass, uh, and that puts Southern Miss on top, 31-24. Uh, to 24. Rice uh, did manage to get it down inside the 10-yard line, but uh, Southern Miss's defense finally held up. They traded a couple of punts, and then they fumbled. Again, Southern Miss uh, fumbles their third a fumble. In fact, it was a Frank Gore. Actually, it was a really good defensive play. Gabe Taylor was actually tackling Frank Gore, and Frank Gore was going down. I should say Frank Gore Jr. His dad was on the sideline, but Frank Gore was going down, and he he just he, he you know to, to talk about the Cajuns, you know the peanut punch, uh, uh, Tillman's peanut punch, and he, he knocked the ball out, uh, and uh, Rice recovered, but they went three and out. Next play, or next uh, next drive, uh, another touchdown by uh, Southern Miss. One play, Frank Gore, 55-yard run. And then an interception, uh, basically, end of the ballgame. It's 38 to 24. But here was the thing. Rice knew what was coming. You could not stop it. It's like trying to cover Michael Jordan or trying to stop Tom Brady or I, the most dominant player that I remember in baseball. It was the 89 A's going back a long time and Ricky Henderson. And they're playing the Blue Jays who are pretty good. Didn't quite win the World Series yet, but I'm pretty sure they're playing the Blue Jays in the playoffs. And, you know, before the fourth hitter of the game came up, the Blue Jays were already trailing one nothing. Ricky Henderson would either get a base hit or walk, steal second, steal third, and come home and score. I've never seen a baseball player dominate before. And it was more like watching Ricky Henderson try and steal second base. You knew he was going to do it. And you couldn't stop him. And here was the thing. He knew you couldn't stop him. You knew you couldn't stop him. He knew that you knew you couldn't stop him. Here, same thing. They could not stop Frank Gore Jr. Not at all. And that is the most yards. Uh, the yards he had is not only a... Southern Miss rushing record, not only a Lending Tree Bowl uh, record, it's an FBS Bowl rushing uh, record. 329 yards uh, will go down in history uh, as right now the best rushing uh, game in the history of college football, FBS anyways. Uh, and we're talking about the Nebraskas and the Oklahomas back in the day. That was impressive uh, by Southern Miss and our guy, Will Hall, uh, doing a good job and certainly will have some momentum. And, you know, if Frank Gore, Frank Gore Jr. is, I believe, as it turns out, a junior in class. Actually, he's just a sophomore. Oh, no. Well, he's been there three years. So 2020, uh, 2020 is the COVID year. So he actually has two more years of eligibility. But they basically warned... Uh, the rest of the Sun Belt, you better get us now because we're coming for you. And that's basically, he's doing it on South Alabama's field saying that. Uh, you know, Troy is already conference champions. We'll get to them here momentarily. Uh, and uh, the Cajuns, you know, are, what, what are they going to do? Are they going to be in that mix? Or, you know, does somebody else, does Texas State and, uh, you know, G.J. Kinney uh, step up uh, to the plate uh, in the uh, Sun Belt Western Division, which will be, much more difficult in 2023 than the East was in 2022. Or I should say, than the East will be in 2023. All right. The East was very difficult in 2022. Uh, so, I mean, Frank Gord, 
Junior came out and said it, you know, get us now because we're coming for you. And it's going to be fun if you get these rivalries. And by the way, the Lending Tree Bowl, uh, I did not uh, go to the game. I was out of town for a little bit. Uh, they did a great job of putting Southern Miss on the far sideline, on the visitor sideline. So the fans would be behind uh, the uh, the bench. And Southern Miss was going to travel well. It was a little chilly, right? I, I think more, more, most importantly, it stayed dry. Uh, but uh, it, it certainly looked like a good turnout uh, because they put all of the Southern Miss fans right behind the Southern Miss bench. And that's what the TV saw. So it looked like a good crowd. Uh, congratulations to the Lending Tree Bowl. And congratulations to uh, Frank Gore Jr., Southern Miss, Will Hall. You know, good job by Rice. You know, uh, let, let's give them a little credit. They could have just given up, right? They just could have mailed it in uh, and, uh, and, and take their shellacking. Instead, they came back. They were down 14 twice, uh, took a seven-point lead, and it was just too much uh, Southern Miss and too much uh, Frank Gore uh, Jr. So uh, uh, good stuff there. Uh, that was actually the second bowl of the weekend for uh, the Sun Belt because they started out with some outstanding stuff uh, so far. Uh, two games, two victories. We'll talk about the first one uh, next. But first... Let me tell you about LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain they have access to your best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check them out and check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's incredibly easy to add your job and the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, so... The second game of the uh, the weekend was the Southern Miss ball game, but uh, the first one was uh, Troy. That was in the Lending Tree Bowl. The first one was UTSA and Troy, and this was you know two top twenty five teams in the Cure Bowl in Atlanta. This followed the uh, this followed the uh, uh, the Bahamas Bowl, and again, I still think that South Alabama is in a better better TV slot, but. Troy and UTSA are two ranked teams playing against each other uh, in Orlando in the middle of the day on Friday. And Troy got off to an awful start. Uh, Gunnar Watson, unfortunately, returned back to form. He looked really good for about three ball games, and especially against Coastal Carolina in the Sunbelt Championship game and had all kinds of issues against UTSA. Uh, at one point in time, UTSA was on top. 12 uh, to nothing. Troy's defense did a pretty good job, but UTSA gets a safety of Watson in the end zone and they take a uh, 12 nothing lead. I guess the big play, the big part of the first half was uh, Troy getting on the board after an interception. As Gunnar Watson found uh, Deshaun Stoudemire for 11 yards. Uh, to set it up first down and goal. And then uh, Kimani uh, Vidal with a two-yard run uh, put Troy on the board. So instead of being down 12 nothing at half, Troy is just down 12-7. to Unfortunately, they had back-to-back -back interceptions as uh, Troy threw two interceptions in the first half, uh, but they did pick off uh, UTSA. Still, it's a 12-7 ball game heading into the second half. And Troy's defense was just spectacular. They they stepped up. They they struggled to begin with, but they made the adjustments. John Summerall, the obvious choice for Sun Belt Coach of the Year. Uh, they force a fumble, but instead of maybe kicking a field goal, Troy goes for it on a fourth down. But then UTSA fumbles again. Troy can't do anything with it. They got to punt it away. Uh, and then they got an interception in uh, the end zone. Uh, they did get an, uh, an interception. Let me see where the interception was. Intercepted, I think it was down at, towards the end zone. And he and uh, K.J. Robertson returned it for 61 yards, basically, in the red zone. 
uh, to the uh, UTSA 37 yard line. And they put this one in. Gunnar Watson uh, to Ray J. Johnson for 12 yards for a touchdown. That was a spectacular pass by Gunnar Watson. It was a great route. Uh, it was a great catch. Uh, Johnson was uh, covered incredibly well. And it was a fantastic pitch and catch from Watson to Johnson uh, because a gunner did not play particularly well. 13 of 23. I th- what did I see? What did I see? 114 yards. Cause again, it was not, he was not very explosive. I mean, 113 yards, 12, 13 to 23, 113 yards, a touchdown and two interceptions. I mean, UTSA is one of the highest scoring teams in the country. And if you told me those were going to watch the statistics, I would have told you there's no way they're winning. It's just not going to happen. You know, that was going to be the problem. And meanwhile, you know, I mean, this is what UTSA did, right? UTSA, same thing with, uh, same thing with Troy. They hadn't lost since the third game of the year. And that was 41 to 20 uh, against Texas. And against North Texas, 48. UTEP, 34. Rice, 41. LaTeX, 51. Uh, UAB, 44 in double overtime. 31-27 over North Texas in regulation. 30 against FIU. Western Kentucky, 31. Middle Tennessee, 45. 52 on Texas Southern. And Troy held UTSA <laughs> to 12 points. Let me see what they have. To- total points per game, 36.8. That's probably with the 12 points that uh, Troy gave up. Incredible. Nonetheless, uh, Gunnar Watson had that fantastic pass uh, to Johnson, and uh, and that was basically it. Again, UTSA could not do anything. Let's see what it says for UTSA statistically on a offensive, what they do as a team. Let me see here. Uh, uh, now, this is kind of total stuff here. Yards per game offense, 476. 476 yards of offense per game for uh, UTSA. Let's see what they put up against Troy. 476 against Troy. They put up 345. They had 194 yards passing. 194 yards passing against Troy. Let's see what that is. Does it tell us what it is on a regular basis? Let's see here. Offense, yards per game. No, it doesn't. Uh, rushing yards, passing. Uh, pass it. No, it doesn't. Net yards passing a game, 300. Sorry, it does. 300 yards passing a game. Troy held them to 100 yards less. Fantastic stuff. And so now the uh, Sun Belt is in fantastic shape as Troy with a come from behind victory, a Southern Miss kind of a, well, I'd like to say a come from ahead victory. And all of a sudden the Sun Belt is two and oh. And tonight Marshall and Yukon are going at it and they got a good shot to start out three and oh, half the league is going bowling. And I think Louisiana is the only one that may have a little bit of difficulty, mostly because Houston's pretty good. And, they're going to have a tough time without some guys playing. Uh, but so far, no one's opting out for South Alabama, or very few anyways. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. It could very well be by Wednesday, and that's going to be very difficult. That South Alabama-Western Kentucky game is going to be hopefully a lot of fun uh, because Western Kentucky, if South Alabama's defense shows up and can somehow slow down Western Kentucky, it's going to be a good ball game. All right? I still think it'll be over, uh, but it, it's going to be a fascinating uh, ball game. Uh, that is for sure. Uh, and so, uh, so again, Troy with a victory, they, they start out the Sun Belt 1-0 and Southern Miss, they, uh, finish off the weekend with a victory as well. Frank Gore Jr. with a record setting performance, fantastic stuff, uh, from Frank Gore Jr. Um, and, uh, and we shall see on how the Sun Belt does, uh, the rest of the Bulls. We'll start to talk about that here momentarily, uh, but let me tell you about bet online betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info stats news and analysis get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from baseball to basketball to soccer and esports we've got it all at betonline.net and if you love sports podcasts you can find those at betonline as well 
We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, wrapping things up, Dave Schultz uh, locked on a Sun Belt, your team uh, every day. We're going to start also getting back into basketball, mostly because South Alabama is going to be back at home, uh, and I can focus a little bit more not only on them but on the rest of the conference. Uh, South Alabama's got Spring Hill, kind of across, not even a crosstown rival, down-the-street rival, uh, if you will, uh, more like a down-the-street foe. I'm not sure how much of a rival. Uh, but they play um, w- they play Monday before Jacksonville State uh, comes into the Mitchell Center to play on Wednesday. That game is moved up to 2 p.m. because South Alabama football is playing at night, and maybe Richie Riley wanted to go watch the uh, the football team play. Certainly, the fans weren't going to be able to go to both, uh, and so they moved up the uh, the basketball game. And so uh, we will uh, we'll find out what happens. At the basketball game, we were planning on being down in uh, New Orleans for the uh, New Orleans Bowl. Uh, that is Wednesday. Again, should be high scoring. Uh, Austin Reed is back after going into the transfer portal, getting an NIL deal. Well played, Austin. And he is out of the transfer portal. And it should be a, a well of a ball game. Kind of figure it's going to come down to who can get a stop or two. And... You know, who doesn't make the mistake? Who gets the turnover? Who forces the throw? Uh, we'll see. Austin Reed is very prolific. Carter Bradley is re- very prolific. Uh, in, in, uh, uh, in his own right, South Alabama a little bit better running the football and a much better defense uh, than Western Kentucky. Uh, but up first on Monday is a Marshall and a UConn. So we will see about that. Jim Moore Jr. has done a fantastic job. Forget about, you know, respectability. You know, he, he moved UConn up from em- embarrassing right? and and non-competitive to now a bowl game, right? It, it, I'm sure it matters to them, but even if they lose this ball game and go to a losing record because they're 6-6, six and six, it'll be a fantastic season for UConn. It's a, it is already a fantastic season for UConn. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, Charles Huff with Marshall's had a, a quite the up-and-down season with some losses he shouldn't have, but they did beat Notre Dame. Uh, and uh, they have finished very strong in the Sunbelt Eastern's Divi- Eastern Division. <laughs> and last year they came up short against, uh, wouldn't you know it, Sunbelt foe, Louisiana, uh, in the New Orleans Bowl, as they got Levi Lewis, as I, I like to say, as he he torched them in the fourth quarter. Uh, this year, Marshall is outstanding defensively, and we will see uh, what happens against UConn again. I, I, I did pick Troy to, to win and cover. I did pick Southern Miss to win and cover. I'm picking Marshall uh, to win and cover as well. So we will continue to uh, preview the bowl games and uh, start talking. Well, we got National Signing Day coming up. We'll keep you up to date with uh, the portal. I think Josiah Stewart out of Coastal Carolina, what defensive end is going to Michigan. And we're still wondering what's going on with Auburn and Grayson McCall. He was supposed to visit this past weekend and didn't make it. Is he still interested? It's being reported that it is a uh academic issue about transferring grades and the such and when he would be able to graduate uh college so we will see if uh if that is that's some big news actually uh depending on uh what uh what auburn wants to do they're also bringing in devin leary from north carolina state so it'll be very interesting because grayson mccall either one of those would be great for auburn but grayson mccall would be a huge step up for nor uh, for uh for auburn uh from coastal carolina all right once again uh, I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Thank you so much uh, for watching. Very excited uh, about Lockdown Sunbelt. And uh, we're off to a very good start. And uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, thankful that the uh, the Sunbelt is off to a good start in bowl games uh, because they'll get a lot of publicity. The more they win, you know, 3-0, and 4-0, you know, 4-1, and 5-1. And, uh, and, you know, we've got some good teams that are, uh, that are still uh, getting ready to play um, coming up. All right. Once again, I'm your host, Dave Schultz. This is Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day.